Don't you just love it that sometimes you come to a point, you're finally addressing something that's been irking, bothering you, you still hadn't figured out quite the best way to go about it, and then eventually, bit by bit, pieces do fall into place, and then you realize, now I know what I'm gonna do about it. And that is the case with my two bulba films in this community pot, which was an attempt, and it could have been a success, but for several reasons. And those are the main factor, the main reason actually is my leka. Back in the day when I got these orchids in, I was getting orchids in so quickly, I did not let my leka ever soak and leach long enough. So the mineral buildup was astounding. And it's clear to me that not even needing to look at the tags, by the state of the leka, I know that these were one of the first to ever join my collection. I wanted uh, Obophyllum medusa, so I finally found one and I quickly bought it. And then that was one of my what first two, three orchids when I was building this collection. Unfortunately, it turns out she was mislabeled. And she is a, an Elizabeth Ann Buckleberry, but what do you do? You go back to the nursery, or the seller, and three years later and say, um, excuse me, but this is not the Medusa that I paid for. Yeah, there's not no such a thing for the orchid purchaser, the customer. They are always stumped. You buy a seedling and you pay beaucoup dinero for a seedling that you think is rare, hard to come by, you grow it on. Four years later, it blooms as something else. Do you go back? Can you go back? What are they going to do about it? Nothing. There's still a little bit of a lack of quality control regarding orchid nurseries and their service long-term responsibilities. All right, so long story short. Oh, excuse me. Hello, how are you? Thank you for joining me. Appreciate it that you do so. But long story short, if you haven't seen my dirty Lekka video, the 2.0, this is what happens when Lekka is not leached through properly and starts to accumulate on the surface. The roots that I got the orchid with were dead, so I just used them for anchoring. This is not me using fertilizer, because also you can see by the growths that I did grow, these three right here, that the first two were really small, no fertilizer. And then bit by bit, I started adding some fertilizer. And then we got some roots and she did actually bloom for me in 2020. But everything here, the crystallization, that is from Lekka that hasn't been leached and the minerals inside the Lekka. What am I going to do different about it this time? First of all, if I was going to use Lekka, I have plenty now that is leached over many, many, many months. So it's cleared, it's as clean as I can get it. But since I have started working with Akadama, I'm going to put both these orchids into Akadama, but they're gonna get their separate pots. But first of all, I will get a toothbrush and try and get rid of the excess minerals on the roots and the rhizome. Give them a good clean up. This is Bulbophyllum contorticepalum. It has never bloomed for me, but despite its nasty, nasty environment, it did start to grow roots. So we're gonna take care of that. Even a little new growth is starting and we'll make sure that it gets into its own little pot, cleaned up and situated for success also with Akadama. So we have a little bit of work to do today. Thank you very, very much for joining me. If you're interested in this and you're gonna stick around, I appreciate it. First of all, toothbrush. I have some RO water. This is one of those baby toothbrushes. It's quite soft, but still has enough in it to make it, you know, strong enough to scrub everything off. 
My main concern right now is the rhizome and not so much the old roots that are crystallized in the back because I'm going to be cutting them off. But I do want to get the rhizome off because for years I have been using Q-tips to stop the wicking of the minerals up into the rhizome and onto the pseudobulbs. Uh, it was always such a tedious task, but I felt so bad because I was a little bit lost as to what to do in order to make this orchid thrive better. I was never really quite sure the quality of my leka. I was still investigating which leka. And then, you know, more orchids come in, you get distracted, a lot of work. And this one was sort of just, yeah, there in the corner. I was trying to spray it, mist it regularly to dislodge also the mineral buildup, but that wasn't too successful because the mineral buildup in the leka was so intense, no matter how much I misted it or sprayed it, even the flushing, the amount of flushing I did, it did absolutely nothing for the orchid. I'm actually quite lucky that it didn't just go all rot on me because of, you know, putting so much water on her. Very grateful. Not the orchid that I wanted, but you know, sometimes orchids come into your life and you think, okay, what am I gonna do? I'm not gonna throw you away. But uh, I never thought of using the ceramis. She had already been potted up and she was getting settled in. And if I were then to unpot her again with ceramis, I was just, it was just one of those games that you play in your head. What's best, leave her alone, see what happens, interfere, stress out more. Anyway, and then, you know, time passes, you get busy, etc. And suddenly three years later, or maybe even four, here we are. And Akadama has come into my life. My Lekka, if I were to use it, is superb now, cleaner. And I think with Akadama, she's going to do fabulously, both of them actually. So I don't know how you are in your situation with regards to your Lekka. I would be super interested to know if you have similar experiences with your Lekka that after you leach it, your TDS shoots up and then you have to keep leaching it until it's clean. Let me see before I scrub further and get rid of these crystallized roots. Yeah, and there is a wire because I'm going to do something similar to it. She was climbing out of the pot, of course, being a bulb of film, and I couldn't keep the rhizome above the media, so I put like a little hook in to stabilize her into the pot. That only worked so long. All right. Yeah, these are all gone. I'm going through my list of ASAP orchids. And it's quite nice to be able to do that right now. It feels good. I don't know, again, at the beginning I mentioned, how does it feel, do you have these situations? And then suddenly you have that moment of the light bulb moment, and then, yay, you feel like you're actually being proactive as opposed to just reacting. That's how I'm feeling right now. Okay, so a piece just came off. That's interesting. Like a natural break there. That's super interesting. What, now we have two? That was not part of the plan, but oh, okay. Look at that, where it came off. There's a hollow right there. There we go. Huh, okay. That didn't take much, so there was already some infractions going on. see if it was a bug issue. 
it might have been it might have been something it came with because of the amount of salts that were accumulating on the rhizome <laughs> in my place a bug would not have survived no way <laughs> uh -uh. you see this i know i keep showing it but i want to make a real point all that that would start wicking up the bulbs as well so pardon me for repeating myself but i do want to make a point that not all leka is the same i get that but it is super important to know what is in your pot not just water not just fertilizer especially if you're growing inorganic in my opinion it's easy to become lackadaisical growing inorganic thinking yeah no it's inorganic it's fine just leave it no problem um Yes and no. There has to be a certain vigilantism about it. You can't just expect the inorganic media to do the work for you. For me, the beauty of growing inorganic is I can recycle. That is what it is about for me. And no, I'm not one of those that has five baskets in the basement to go to the recycling deposit. I used to do that in Germany. Here I'm just a little bit more, you know, my batteries go where my batteries go, my glasses and my plastic goes where that goes. So not as much as what I did in Germany. And we don't get newspapers here anymore. So it's all a bit different. Our medication, you know, goes to the pharmacy, but so I'm not that strict anymore about my recycling that's not the point of this exercise it's a cost factor for me I don't have to worry about can I afford bark or not the only thing I need to make sure is that if I have stash leka soaking do I have enough for everything that I need to do and has it soaked long enough and if the answer is yes then I don't need to buy more this season, I'm bumping up some orchids into really, really big pots. So I have to, I can recycle some, but the big pots obviously are swallowing up more leka than I have in petto from the old pots that I'm recycling. So that's when I will have to think I need another bag or two, you know. But last season, I went through the entire season not buying any leka, recycling everything that went from one pot and then into another. That was a really good feeling, especially considering how 2020 was. It was a good feeling to not have to make that selection, which orchid needs to be taken care of and which orchid do I have to kind of sacrifice because I can't afford the bark. That felt really good. And it just proved a point to myself that I'm glad I made the switch when I did. All right, that's one piece cleaned up enough. No new growths as of yet, but it's okay. We can work with this piece. Now, very gently, let's have a look-see at our Contorti Sepalum. Oh, are you still? Yeah, you still need a little bit of a brush. Contorti Sepalum is showing a new growth as is this little piece here and it has roots so i'm glad to see that i'm going to leave the back of this rhizome on as it's going into a very wet environment in the pot with akadama i'm not going to cut a wound open because i want this piece to do well actually it came off randomly which is a shame, but maybe for positioning in the pot, it'll serve its purpose. So I won't be cutting the piece off. But there is a new growth coming, if I haven't by now messed it up. Either way, if it grows, great. Let's see if you can see that right there. If it grows, fantastic. If it doesn't, that's okay too. 
and you tell that I'm so just so happy to have found a solution. <laughs> now this one does need a cut because there's a little bulb in the back that is nasty. Oh my goodness, you poor little thing. My poor little neglected bulbo. Bubble film roots are just a little bit finer because they like it more wet in there and around the roots, but same thing, there's a velamen and you pull it and you know it's dead. Same principle as with any chunky root phalaenopsis that where it's more obvious, but there's that actual root. So that's the same, same thing. Pretty much some of them are like oncidium roots. You've got to be a little bit more careful with this one. I do have live roots, but very far and few in between. But I believe we're going to change that. And here's the thing. Yes, I'm not going to put a, any cinnamon on the back of the rhizome here because it was all woody and dried out. So that, that's not an omission. There's just no need. The rhizome is completely woodied up. I'm not going to mess with cinnamon there. Let's see if we can just brush this off a little bit very carefully around the new growth because there were salts already on the new growth. That's not going to be conducive to growing really well if it's already getting desiccated with the salt. I want to get the old Lecker off as best as possible. Three beads, I don't mind. I don't want this high salt lecker on going into the Akadama. I'm going to try and give this a good fresh start. And I hope it forgives me and just goes, oh my goodness, finally, finally, she's paying attention. Hope to see the result in the relief of the orchid. Another thing as well, I haven't gone to the trouble of sterilizing my pruners between the two orchids for the simple reason that they've been living in the same bowl for three years. So if there is a disease, they both already have it. But I don't think it's what we think, what we hate, the F-bomb. This is a combination of neglect and two high salts in the lecker. I'm going to be cleaning up this pot here because I will be reusing it for the Elizabeth Ann Buckleberry and I will be back to assemble our bulbophyllum into something much more happier for it. Let's put you over here as well. And I will be right back. All right, well, all that footage is gone. I don't know what happened while I was filming. The camera stopped, which is a bummer because we were doing really well. Things were looking really good. So I will try and repeat what I said and did when we tackle the little one, the Contorti Sepalum. I guess there's a reason for everything. Yep, the camera just stopped filming. Sorry about that. <laughs> so all I'm doing is just flushing it through and letting the Akadama settle in and around the roots. Let's get to Contorti Sepalum because now that will become the explanatory of what I am doing with my Bulbophyllums this time around. I'll be right back. Let's try this again then. Okay, what I did with the big Elizabeth Ann Buckleberry was pretty much do what I normally do with a self-watering. Even though the pot touches the base of the mask, I filled it with, I, I plugged the holes with lava rock so that the water just doesn't go straight through. Secondly, I did two of these microfibers just to help me with the wicking. And that is basically where we are at right now with the Contorti Sepalum, which I have plans for in this little 15 centimeter pot to get it going. I'm going to treat it like a seedling. And then when it can graduate, 
if it gets to that point, it will go into one of the little square pots that I have. Okay, right. So, what I did with the other one is I crocked it with my very dirty lecker that I sorted out from my new lecker bags. I wasn't going to use all the lava rock for that because that is a waste. I don't need to have fancy stuff at the bottom of my pots. I need something that just fills the gap and makes the pot shallower, but still guarantees a certain amount of drainage. And this garbage lecker, as I call it, is perfect for that. Now, let's see. Of course, this is not going to be secure in the pot and I don't want it flopping around. So I'm going to make a little wire sort of support to hold the two little pieces together. And for that, I use some of this recycled stuff and it's going to be a bit of a fiddle. So I'm hoping to buy myself some time in the pot for the little contorti sepalum by bringing the rhizome in into a little bit of a semicircle and then see what the bulbophyllum does after that. And just like with the Elizabeth band and Buckleberry, I left the wire stem on, like a little bit of the length on, because that is going to be helping me to anchor the orchid in the pot. So the bulbophyllum has the same setup. I pulled in the rhizome. This was all off footage, which I don't have. Pulled in the rhizome like this to make it a little bit more easy in the pot. And both ends have the strand of wire, which I anchored into the akadama. All right, let's see that we do this again. This time on camera. I have my little stake which I'm going to, just like with any other orchid stake, put into the, the lecker. And I could literally, supposedly, walk away. It is now secure in the pot. Just that one little extension on the wire, but I'm not done yet. Clearly, I'm not done yet. Okay, let's put some labels in. Let me show you. Let me show you. I'll give this a good flush. All right, there you go. My Elizabeth Ann Buckleberry is pretty much the same as the Contorti Sepalum, despite the fact that, yep, the camera switched off. That happens every once in a while. I'm really glad to be able to say that I've got two to deal with today, and that gave me the opportunity to make up for it. But you can see that there's a wire which I've attached to the front and I've pulled the rhizome together a little bit, hopefully giving me a little bit more space. I doubt it because when this one gets really going, the length of that rhizome can be double. Ah, but for now, what you know, you can do what you can. I don't want a bigger bowl for this one because that would just take it to Sillyville. We'll deal with it now and see how it adapts to the Akadama. The second piece is loose. It's just laid on top because of the way it's grown. This little side shoot here has, grows further down than the main shoot that actually broke off. So that's a pity. And Contorti Sepalum here as well. You saw me at least do that one. That's good. <laughs> and if you, there's that growth. I don't think that growth is going to make it. It's been handled too much today, but that's okay. If the orchid itself is happy with the more water retentive 
material around its roots. It's got its own pot now. It'll send up another new growth. Not too worried. Hey, and if that growth doesn't fail, happy days. So here they are. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope that this was of interest and that maybe if you have unruly bulbophyllums, that you can do what I did, wire them up and use the ends of the wire as your stake. Have a wonderful day, everybody. I appreciate you keeping me company. Take care. Bye.